God will use your life to be father from, for people from all nations. Because right now in America, you have people from Mexico, from Afghanistan, Afghanistan from China. And God will bring you into their lives. And because you're not white, because you're not black, they will be interested in finding out about you. And always tell them your testimony. That you put your faith in Jesus Christ. And God will use your life to raise up young men and women who will be followers of Jesus. Let's pray together. Father, I bless these men. Some right now our fathers some will be future fathers that's a great responsibility and a great opportunity use us to bless our children to teach them to encourage them to discipline them that they may love their God with all their heart with all their strength and mind and even children from other nations so that Jesus Christ Jesus will be glorified all over the world. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. So today I want to share about being Christ's ambassadors. Uh, next slide. And this is a simple verse that Jesus spoke to us. And in one verse, he introduces two kings, two rulers. So if we can all read John 10.10 10 in, in your language. One, two, three. Amen. Amen. So Jesus says, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And we can see that all over the world. Even in America, there are young people killing each other with a gun. Or they're taking their lives. Or filling it up with drugs. And that's because they're following the wrong king. Only death comes. But Jesus says, I have come to bring life. He's the second king. And if you're not following Jesus, you're following Satan. There are only two kings. If you think you are in control over your life, you're mistaken. You're following Satan. And in the end, death will come to your life. Next slide. And so the Bible tells us 
David's with the Christian Bedagos. In Colossians 1, 12, and 13. And let's read this together. Verse 12. 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 And the Lord tells us, all of us, when we were born, we were, we were born into the kingdom of darkness. Even your children, very handsome, and your daughter is very pretty, they may be very smart. A lot of talent. But it doesn't matter. Even if they grew up going to church. Every child born into this world is born into the kingdom of darkness until they put their faith in Jesus. When they are born again, then the Bible says they go from kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Amen. And this is the important message that the world needs to hear. <laughs> Whether they were born in America, in Mongolia, in North Korea, whether they were born into a Christian family or a Muslim, Muslim it doesn't matter. Every child <coughs> was born into the kingdom of darkness. And next slide. Uh, next one. And so that's why we read this passage. That we are now ambassadors of Jesus Christ. And once we become Christians, God has given us this title. You are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God says you are special. To be an ambassador of America. You have to go through usually uh, college, graduate school, even study law, and then after that they may consider you. But to be an ambassador of Jesus, it's different. You don't need it. College education. You just need to have faith in Jesus. And when you are born again, even for young children who are 10 years old, when they come to Christ, from that day, they are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. So next slide. Uh, next one. Okay. What is an ambassador? An ambassador represents his country. He represents his king. He tells other people how great his country is. And as ambassadors of Jesus, we, we tell others about who Jesus is. That's our job. We don't convert anybody. That's the job, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. And so remember that. We can convert nobody. But we do have to tell them our testimony, Bible verse, or even pray for them. Next slide. So let me tell you about this young man. He's from Iraq. 
He came to America five years ago. He was fighting for the U.S. military. And so the American government brought him to Baltimore. And about two years ago, my wife and I were at a Chinese mission conference. And there was right here in Baltimore. There were 3,000 Chinese learning about missions. And my wife and I were there giving seminars. And one night I met this young man. And he was a Muslim. And I asked him, where are you from? And he said, I'm from Baghdad. And I asked him, how are your parents? And he said, my parents are still living there. And I am worried about that. <coughs> because there was still bombing happening all over. So after two minutes of talking, I said, can I pray for your parents? And he said, yes. So always offer to pray for Muslim friends. I never had a Muslim refuse prayer. So I prayed. God bless Iraq. Bring peace to that nation. I pray for his parents. Keep them safe. Bless them with the blessing from heaven. And may they come to know true God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Always pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. So that they know who gets the credit. Amen. That they know that it is Jesus who answered the prayer. So after we pray, I could see that he was tearing up because no one prayed for him like that in America. And then after that, I asked him, have you ever read the Bible? And he said, no, I never read it. And I didn't have a copy of the Bible. The next slide. But I had a copy of the Jesus video in Arabic language and I gave it to him and I said please watch this and then we said goodbye and we, we left the conference two days later this young man and he says, I watched the movie. Very exciting. But I have a lot of questions. And I knew that he needed to meet somebody who spoke Arabic. Next slide. So, by God's grace, I connected him with an Egyptian pastor who lives in Baltimore. They met for two hours and the Egyptian pastor explained the gospel. And after two hours, this Muslim became a Christian. Praise the Lord. And then we met him about one month later. And this is what he said. <laughs> when I was watching the movie about the life of Jesus, I watched it two times. And as I was watching the movie, 
Jesus was speaking to me. Jesus yet not the ear Jesus. From the TV screen he was speaking. To me. And he was saying, How can he know my life? It's just a movie. So we can always But how can he know my life? I need to know more about him. And that's why he became a Christian. And your job as ambassador of Jesus yeah. is to give people Bible. Is to give them the Jesus movie. Is to pray for them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And I want you to know God took Korean American couple in a Chinese mission conference to reach out to an Iraqi Muslim Iraq, and brought him to Christ to, through Egyptian pastor. And God can use people from all over the world. Amen. Amen. He can use the Mongolian people. And he will bring people into your lives. Next slide. So we want to learn from the Bible. How did Jesus advance his kingdom? How did he tell other people about God's kingdom? And when we look at his life, First, he preached God's truth. Second, he shared God's love. God's sacrificial love. God's unconditional love. And then third, Jesus showed God's power. He didn't always go around and preach on the street. Sometimes he would show them love first. And then he would open their heart. So that they can listen to God's truth. So next slide. So if you look at John chapter 3, we will not read it right now. But it's a story of Jesus and Nicodemus. And Nicodemus was a teacher of God's word. But he had a lot of questions. So he came to Jesus at night. And they have conversation. And Jesus explains to him what it means to be born again. Next slide. And then the second prophet asked him a question. How many Eve did God create for Adam? I mean, oh. <laughs> yeah. How long? Adam yeah. <laughs> And this man said, only one. And this prophet said, that's right. God wanted Adam and Eve, one man, one woman, to be married. And he wanted Adam and Eve to be married for life. If God wanted Adam to have many wives, he would have made two, three, or hundred years. And God wants you to love your wife like you love your own body. Love her. Cherish her. Be kind to her. And who knows? 
She may start cooking better for you. So the second man said thank you. And he left. Third day, another man came to the first prophet. And he said, I have a neighbor who is very um, rough, very bad. He gets drunk every night. There's trash all over my yard. And then he throws stones at my kids. And my kids get all bloody. What do I do with him? And the first prophet said, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. <laughs> Whatever he does to you, you do to him. This man went to the second prophet and asked the same question. <laughs> and the second prophet said, it's easy to love those who love you. God wants you to love those who hate you. Love them. Pray for them. Forgive them. Bless them. And so I share this with this woman. And then I asked her question. Which prophet would you follow? And without hesitation, she said, I will follow the second prophet. And I told her, you know who that is. And I opened the gospel to John. And I told her, the second prophet is Jesus. And she knew, she knew who the first prophet was. It's Muhammad. And so my wife was there, and she shared the rest of the gospel. And she became a Christian. Praise the Lord. And now she's part of a Sierra Leone church in Fairfax. And she brings other Muslim women to that church. And that's what God can do. As you tell your testimony. As you tell stories from the Bible. Next slide. And that's the promise Jesus made. Let's read. John 14, 26. Amen. God has given you the Holy Spirit. Amen. He lives in you. Ask him to help you. And he'll help you. Ask him to teach you. And he'll teach you. He'll give you wisdom. Because our Jesus is greater than Muhammad. They are not at the same level. Amen. Amen. Muhammad is dead. He's buried. <laughs> and because he rejected Jesus, he's going to be in hell for eternity. Our Jesus is alive. And so, always lift up Jesus higher. Higher than anything, anyone. He's greater than Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping is it Greater than Trump. Trump is it Putin. Putin is it Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan is it We don't have to compare him with anyone else here on earth. Next slide. Second way that Jesus talked about God's kingdom and shared God's king love and shared God's truth, sometimes he first had to show love. 
In John chapter 8, we see Jesus showing mercy. To a woman who was caught in adultery. And we know for the rest of her life she would follow Jesus. The next slide. And in John chapter 13, Jesus showed us how to serve one another. Jesus is the Son of God. But he would wash the feet of his disciples. The feet that were smelly, had all kinds of mud, even animal dung, that Jesus would, with his own hands, wash their feet. Next slide. Let me tell you about Ali Sher. He was a Tajik Muslim. When he was 20 years old, he got married. And he would drink a lot. And he beat up his wife. Five times she had to go to hospital. But after fifth time, her father came to fight against Alishir and stabbed him with a knife. Alisher lost a lot of blood. He had to go to hospital for one week. After he came out, he took an iron pipe. Metal pipe. And he took it and hit his father-in-law in the head. And the skull cracked. And it was bleeding. And Alisher took an empty bowl and collected all the blood and drank it in front of his father-in-law and said, you took my blood, I'm taking your blood. And his father-in-law died. And the Russian police came, arrested him, put him in prison for 20 years. But when he was in prison, he met Russian Christians. <coughs> and he became a Christian. Praise the Lord. When he was released, he came back to his village. But because he drank that blood, he caught some kind of nerve disease. And slowly he could not move his arms. He could not move his legs. His first wife left him. He got married again. This time to a Christian woman. And she started taking care of him. And he could no longer drive. He could not even take a bus to go to church. So he was asking people, who can disciple me? I need someone to come to my house. And so I met him. And once a week, I went to his house with my guitar and with my Bible. And we met for three hours. We would sing for one hour. And then we had Bible study for two hours. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> so the Bible study can be as long as I want. <laughs> and then one day, his wife was waiting. When I got to their house, she said, Pastor James, I have to go shopping. But I'll be back in three hours. So I said, OK. But after three hours, she didn't come back. And Alicia needed to go to the bathroom. So I had to help him. And we went to the outhouse. So there, it was not like a toilet. 
It was a hole in the brow. And so we went in there. And then I helped him. And brought him back to his house. But when I went into this uh, outhouse, it was very dirty. So after the Bible study, I took a bucket of water and a broom and cleaned the house and then went home. Next slide. Next week, his neighbor joined our Bible study. And he said that his, he said to me, no Muslim priest will ever go into someone else's bathroom. They will not clean. Because it will make them defiled. But you are the first man that teaches God's word. That cleans someone else's toilet. He said, I want to learn from you. So he joined our Bible study. And he became a Christian. love to people, even to murderers, God will use our love to bless other people. The next slide. Besides the two men, <laughs> this little girl, she was eight years old. She joined our Bible study. And she began to learn the songs. And then she would go home. And she started singing those songs in front of her parents. Even like the songs we just sang. Like, Lord, I lift your name on high. Cleanse my heart. And her mother became interested. Who are you singing about? Who are you singing to? I like the words. And so, next slide. Her mother eventually joined the women's Bible study. So when this little girl was baptized, her mother was baptized, next slide. Her sister was baptized, later her father was baptized, later her younger brother was baptized. And God did this. Because someone washed the toilet of a murderer. And as you show love, even to gang members, even to drug addicts, even to homosexuals. As you know, show the love of Jesus. God will open their hearts and bring them into God's kingdom. Next slide. And in John chapter 9, in this chapter, Jesus does not preach about God's kingdom until end of the chapter. In the beginning, he simply heals a man who was born blind. And then later, he shows this man that he is the Messiah. And so my wife is going to come and share about this woman coming to Christ. This woman is a witchcraft woman. We call it shaman in English. Her name is Shaman. 
있고. Her name is Shoista. Shoista, I think, right? And she was about my age. And many last year, I think, right? But she had been doing seven years of witchcraft. Ah, that was in the first day. And the kind of thing we were going to do was some book, his book, the old his book. Before I met her, take it one day off, three women. A Korean Russian woman. Ah, so Korean Russian. Russian woman. A Korean woman who lives in Russia. Okay, so. Also, the end of this whole thing is that she invited Shoista to a Korean church. They get a sort of summit out of them. As she was coming into the middle aisle, he had taken a bottle or did it for me. A light from the cross came out. They had taken a sort of my the best in the end of the year. They had taken a bottle or did it for me. And he hit her. They had gone in with a sock that she fell down. They had taken a bottle or did it for me. And then she lay there for two hours. And someone had to drag her out to a home. So this woman knew there is a greater power. 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 Then witchcraft. In the Church of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ in his home that the Abu Kuch Petim Bena Gidig Mitr Shasam. So she never went back to church. She was just scared. I had to face her trust. One day, she got up. She was doing her fortune like every morning. Oh, so she was doing her fortune like every morning. Oh, so she was doing her fortune like every morning. She was trying to find her fortune for the day. On this day, it came out. In the dreams of the year, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Iso Masi. Iso Masi. That's in Uzbek. Uzbek and Iso Masi. So she said, "That's strange. I'm going to do it again." She did magic again. Came up iso masi. Iso masi is the highest culture. That's really strange. I'm gonna do it again. Third time iso masi. So that's when she gave up. And she called her niece. Who is my disciple? And said. Firuza, you need to take me to church. Jesus is calling me. So when Firuza, my disciple, told me, I said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We had been praying for Shoista for six months. Holy Spirit came and called her name. So I said, Sho as a Firuza, today is the day of salvation for Shoista. Let's go to our house. So we took our three weapons. Bible, Bible. songbook, praise songbook, and guitar. And Firuza and me, we marched to our house. When we went to Shoista's house, Shoista let us in. We said Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum assalam. We walked in, and I noticed that we have two bedrooms. One bedroom was only for witchcraft. No one can go in. But the other room was a family room, bedroom, dining room, living room, everything else. We went into that room first. She served us tea. And then we prayed. I said, Lord Jesus, you're calling Shoista. Please open her heart that she may understand who you are. And then I opened the Bible to Leviticus chapter 20. 26-27. Let's read this together in one voice. Thank you. 
Leuten gehen. I read this to Shoista. Shoista, die nicht schlimm und schütte wird. And I said, Shoista, this is what God wants us to do to you. Warum und nur der Ingi hier geht, wo sie zuerst geht. That you should be killed. Und nur der Chapel hier ist ein wenig zu sagen. Because what you are doing is evil. Ja, hat du nicht hier hier gerade hier zu und bald aus. You are using the power of Satan to put curse, to fear, put fear, even bring death upon people. And God hates witchcraft. When I told her that what she's doing is evil, she said, I know what I'm doing is So inside I said, oh, hallelujah. She's ready to repent. I said, there is good news. God loves you so much that he called me to you today. God loves you so much. He doesn't want you to go to hell. So he brought me to tell you there's a better way. God says turn away from wickedness. Repent. Give your life to Jesus. He's ready to forgive you. And make you clean. And you should for his glory. I said, you see, son of God came down to earth. He died for your sins. He paid all the penalty for your sins. But not only did he die for you, Satan could not hold him down. Death could not hold him down. Jesus rose again victoriously. So when you put your faith in him, you will rise again. You will no longer be slave to death. But you will become a daughter of living God. I said, would you like that? She said, yes, I do. I want to give this up. And so she gave her life to Jesus. For four hours, Q&A. And then I said, oh, hallelujah, Lord, I want to go home now. I don't want to be in this witchcraft house. The Holy Spirit spoke to me. Your work is not done yet. You have to go to the other room. Cleanse that room with the blood of Jesus. And so I said, ladies, let's go to the other room. Let's dedicate this room for Jesus Christ. It's no longer a place of death and fear and curse. But Jesus wants to change it to a place of worship. So I could only think of one song about the blood of Jesus. And so he sang, What can wash my sins away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the blood that makes me wider than snow. No other fault I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And so we say that for a dozen times. And then the Lord gave me another vision. Another message from Book of Acts. And so let's read this together. It's 
Amen. You know, God gave me such a boldness that I didn't know I had. Without Jesus, I'll be so scared to go near Shaman. She can put a curse on me, make me sick, and die. But I knew the power of Jesus is greater. His blood is mighty to save. So I told Shoista, I see there's a low table next to us, covered with a tablecloth, and all kinds of witchcraft items, black magic books, there was a knife, there was Quran, there were different cotton balls and razors. Those are shaman's tools. I, after reading this passage, I said, Shoista, people in Ephesus, they were overcome with fear of Jesus. All these shamans in Ephesus, they felt afraid. Because they knew they were sinning against God. With witchcraft. So they decided to bring all their books out to the middle of the city square and burn them all up. And they say, no more. From this point on, we believe in Jesus. We worship him only. I said, how about you, Shoista? I believe Jesus wants you to to burn this up. For you to never turn back. Shoista's eyes got this big. And she looked at me for five seconds. She held her breath. Because this was her business. And the way they fed, she fed her family. She said, let's do it. Amen. So we wrapped the whole thing up, the tablecloth and everything. We got a book of matches. And I said, let's go outside to the dumpster. And then we burned it all up. And it was going up on the flames. And praise God, there was a little drizzling of rain coming down. And then I taught her the song. Because she cut it off. No more slaves to Satan's witchcraft. But the next morning, when she came to see me, she came with fear because she had a nightmare. Satan was going after her. Two men dressed in black came and killed her daughter, cut up into pieces. And Satan warned her, if you run away from me, if you betray me, I will destroy your family. So I told Shoista, I want you to know that Satan is like a roaring lion. Has a but has no teeth. Powerless. 
can only scream at you. So when Chin Chin Cham has no power to touch you. And Jesus is your protector. Jesus will not harm you. And she said, Okay. 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 So she began to follow Jesus. The next day she had a dream. She had a dream that she was standing by a river. And there was a man dressed in animal skin eating grasshoppers and honey. And he was baptizing people in the river. And then later he said to her, Come over here. And so he, she stood in front of him. He baptized her in the river. When she got up, she felt really nauseous. And then she vomited. Vomited all kinds of filthy creatures. Snakes, rats, lizards, and roaches, they all came out. Because of the witchcraft, she was God was cleansing her. Second time, she was baptized. Again, nauseous. Oh, all these ugly creatures just vomit, vomit. Third time, she was baptized. She got up this time. She felt light. Oh, the sky was clear blue. And then spring rain. And then she said, oh, I was so happy. I was taking a shower in the middle of the river. And then she said, who is that man who baptized me? She was a Christian only for two days. She has not read about John the Baptist. I turned to the book of Book of Mark, and Mark I said, John, John the Baptist baptized you. I said, that's no fair. I wasn't baptized by John the Baptist. How many of you were baptized by John the Baptist? Even in dreams. <laughs> But this is what God is doing among the Muslims because they're desperate, desperate to encounter Jesus. So not only Shoista became a Christian, her husband, her son, her daughter, and son, the whole household And God gave her a new job, a dignified job. She became a, a woman leader in her village who would watch over the widows and the, uh, the ladies living in poverty. And then she will bring in income from the help from the government. So she became like a counselor and like a social worker. So when you believe in Jesus, he will give you a dignified job. And she is now a great evangelist. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Last slide. And let's read 2 Corinthians 5.15. Jesus died for us. He paid our penalty. We owe him our life. So now, the Bible says we no longer live for ourselves. But we live for Jesus. Who died for us. You and I were ambassadors of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Sometimes he will send us to witches. Sometimes we will, he will send us to disabled people. 
He'll send us to widows. He'll send us to gang members. But you have the Holy Spirit in you. He will guide you. He will give you the words to say. But the first step is to say, Jesus, I want to live for you. Everything I do is for you. Working as a teacher, as a business, businessman, use my work to tell others about Jesus. Amen. Amen. And he will use your life. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege to be ambassadors of Jesus Christ. Send us to the people who are lost, who are suffering. They're hurting. And they need life. They need healing. They need Jesus Christ. So use us. Let us be a light to those who are living in darkness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.